welcome to the review of the Open Heavens Daily Devotional. We're looking at a topic that says spend time with them. It's the 19th day of June 2024 and by the way we've started this series a couple of days back and we'll pray before we just delve right into it. Our Father we worship you and we say thank you. Thank you for the privilege to study your word. Holy Spirit Divine, we ask that you please teach us and enable us, O oh Lord, indeed, to obey your word and to be able to rule as we ought to over our homes, to manage our homes the way you would have us do. In Jesus' name, Amen. Welcome again. We're looking at a topic that says spend time with them, part three. And you know, like I mentioned earlier, we have started with part one and part two earlier speaking to how parents are required by the Lord to spend time with their children to teach them the word of God on the second day we discussed how we should spend time with the things they spend with the things and the people they spend time with now today we're taking it a bit further and concluding on the teaching that our father and the Lord has been taking us through now our memory verse is taken from 1 Timothy 3 12 and while our Bible reading is taken from 1 Timothy 3 1 to 5 so I'll be taking both together we'll start with the Bible reading that takes that starts from 1 Timothy 3 we'll be reading verses 1 to 5 in the New King James Version this is a faithful saying if a man desires the position of a bishop he desires a good work a bishop then must be blameless the husband of one wife temperate, sober-minded, of good behavior, hospitable, able to teach, not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for money, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not covetous, one who rules his own house well, having his children in submission with all reverence. For if a man does not know how to rule his own house, how will he take care of the church of God? Mm, the profound question the memory verse is taken from the 12th verse of that same chapter in the King James Version it says let the deacons be the husbands of one wife ruling their children and their own houses well more or less like repeating what was said earlier in our Bible reading that to, to become a minister of God it, there are quite a number of requirements you're not quarrelsome, you're not giving to wine husband of one wife Covetous, but one keeps appearing, appeared in this list and appeared in verse 12 again. And it says, One that rules over his own well means effectively with positive results to show for it. So, this is pretty much speaking to ministers of God. And I'd say this so, don't say, Well, I'm not a pastor, or I'm not a the moment you're a child of God, He has already committed you into a ministry. You may not be on the pulpit, but there's a ministry He has given unto you. So in this regard, this is also speaking to you. You're a child of God, you have a family, the Lord is saying that you are required to rule, to manage your home effectively. Now, I the Lord starts off His teaching today to say that many ministers of God, they make the mistake of putting their ministries, their service to God first right and put their families second and the lord is saying no the order is your family comes first says you must rule your own first before you even go into you know into the into serving god as a minister you know and um as far as god is concerned your own must come first do not neglect your family you know our father the lord says here again that your children don't see you only as a minister they see you also as a father so they see you also as a mother so it's important that you they experience you as well in this manner um don't just say well you take them bible teaching in church or you teach them at home beyond that they need to have engagement with you as their parents you know and make the work of the ministry something you they enjoy as a matter of fact we know that in several locations many children of ministers grew up not liking the work of the ministry because of the experiences they've had the hard difficult experiences they've had having parents who were given to ministry but we must not allow this pattern to continue we must make it enjoyable for them let them encounter christ even through 
or saving and not making life so difficult for them. You know, I recall a, a story, you know, a, a man of God who after service had a, a long list of people waiting to see him as usual on Sunday and kept seeing them and seeing them. Service ended at, let's say, service ended at 12 noon and by 2 p.m. he was still seeing people. And it turns out that at, he asked the secretary to let the next guest come in and it was his wife. And he said, oh, I'm still seeing people. She said, yeah, I've come to see the pastor of my church. Are you not the pastor of this church? He said, it's the master. Said, yeah, okay, so I've come to see my pastor, not just my husband. And he says, okay, so what can your pastor do for you? Now, this is the husband speaking to the wife. And the wife says, well, my husband does not have time for the family. He's always at work. The children are missing him. And missing him, what would you advise that I do? And of course, the pastor got the gist and had to call off the, the rest of the, of the meeting and had to reschedule them and had to go home with his family. So in, in, in a nutshell, what we're saying is as a minister of God, you, you, God even requires you to put your family first. You know, one of the major sin that Eli committed, and then the major sin he committed was not being able to put his children on that check. God required him to put his children on that check. It wasn't like he went to steal or do anything, but that was a major reason that the Lord said, be it far from me, what had said, what had promised for the family of Eli. Now, so rather than see programs as things that their father, that takes them, their father away, they now see things as things that can create an adventure. And that's our father in law saying, how we handle his own children at the, at the point. You know, when he's going on, maybe he's going on the crusade or he's going on a ministerial assignment, especially the ones that are done during the festive period, he goes in the caravan and ensures that the children go with him. They crack jokes in the bus, they, you know, they try to make them feel at home. And then that creates that bonding. So they do not see it as this work is taking my father away. Rather, they see it as something that they are doing together. I've been privileged to sit in that bus once with him and I know how great that experience is, how it makes everybody feel so at home, you know, cracking jokes, you know, and making everyone feel very welcome in that in, in that atmosphere. Now that is what is what we are called into as children of God and as ministers. When you are praying for great exploits in ministry, speaking to us children of God, remember to pray for your family too. Put them first in the place of prayers. And he says something so profound there. What you pray about shows what you prioritize. What you are concerned about and pray about shows what you prioritize. Pray for your children and continuously ask that the Lord will help you to manage your home effectively. You spending time with them, spending time with what they spend time with, and you bringing them in to see that it, is, it pays and is beautiful to serve God, not making them feel otherwise. Now, the key point is you must rule your home well first before taking up a leadership position in ministry. Let's reflect on that. Thank you for listening and God bless you.